Educators today face some interesting challenges about trying to change schools and change teaching practices to reflect more 21st century practices. And part of that, I think, is due to um, tw some legacy of 20th, 20th century uh, interventions and things like the way schools are organized by rigid grades, um, the bell schedule that rings, the use of textbooks. And so as we talk about changing schools to prepare kids for a future, we really have to be attentive to some of these legacy factors that are intrinsic to how schools are run. And uh, this is also something we have to communicate with our parents because uh, it's the schooling that they went to. And in terms of making the change, we have to help them understand how we need different schools for our children to prepare them for a future that's different than the past that we experienced. And, and uh, we often forget that when we're thinking about change. We say we want change, but then we go back and we look at how grandma and grandpa went to a one-room schoolhouse, and, and we're saying, okay, well, that wasn't really good enough. Well, wait, it was good enough for them, and they're successful in life right now. So, so what is it that we're giving up in this terms of cultural transmission? Because part of the, the central function of schools is to transmit that knowledge that the culture deems important from one generation to the next. And so how do we make these changes but honor the past? And so one of the, the challenges for schools is to think about, okay, what does stand the test of time? That yes, you're gonna learn this much like grandma and grandpa had to uh, because it has this long-term value versus what do we have to let go because now I really don't have to know that because I have these new things that, that I can look it up. And is that bad? I mean, is it to have to look it up? That's not the same as knowing it personally. But what is it about education that does stand the test of time to say this is worth transmitting versus how we do it, which, okay, we're still talking about the same problems or issues, but how you go about it might be different. And, and that's an important conversation to have and help parents understand. My sense is that most parents are supportive. You know, basically we're telling our children, you have to know everything grandpa did, everything I know, and you have to know more. And, and that's challenging because the, the school day is limited. The question of how do we discern the, what stands the test of time is really a, an important one for everybody because we all have a vested in, interest in the future. We're going to be looking for solutions that we don't have now. And so that means our children are going to have to make discoveries, the things that we can't anticipate. And, and sometimes things go awry. The future isn't as nice as we thought it should be. But uh, that is really an important question for us to think about it. every time a technology challenges the fact that you don't have to do it that way or you don't have to know this. We really should be having a little bit of a conversation to say, is there a downside? to not knowing this. And again, the fact I can look up a lot of things on Google and, and get that immediate answer frees my brain to think at higher levels or to think about more in, in, uh, complex problems. Teachers asking questions that they already know the answer to is probably not going to get us what we need in the future when we want to solve the problem of how to get a man on Mars or how to solve, uh, uh, cure cancer. That Those aren't problems we can look up. And so we probably need a different way of going about thinking and, and using tools to, to find new knowledge.